ければ。Let's just say I'm Frankenstein's monster. When I say Magneto, you say perfection. He's the kind of villain who makes you root for him even harder than the hero. Magneto's established himself as everyone's favorite bad guy mutant. I've been at the mercy of men just following orders. Never again. All right, y'all. Y'all been waiting and debating oh so long <laughs> for Cool J's song, baby. That's right. Here we go once again, man. Big Mike. Y'all mighty triple XL, the pref the Professor X of this joint. Oh, man. We got y'all's daddy back, man. We got Magneto, man. We got Tony Maceo back in the cut, bruh. Oh, my God, boy. Oh, 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 man. I'm trying to tell you, how long has it been? What's the last time we did a show, man? What was it been? Probably going on two years, maybe? Something like that, yeah. God damn, boy. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, bruh. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I've been doing my thing. You've been doing your thing. You know what yeah. I mean? Once again, congratulations on the marriage and whatnot, man. And, uh, that's, yeah, like I said, uh, there's a lot of brothers out here that are happy for you. And then some individuals that seem to have an issue with you uh, not being a trick no more, man, and actually being a hitched, a married man that's being, that guy, that actually got chose, man. Motherfuckers is actually mad about that shit, man. Well, they, they don't understand. I, I turned the big trick, the biggest trick of all. Oh, what's that? Marriage. Marriage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So tell me, uh, you know, because I was always telling you, because we know that I'm married, but I'm, I'm separated. Uh -huh. And I always said that, man, tricking is... What we was doing in the streets is kind of like just marriage, man. You know what I mean? I mean, you're going to be doing the same thing with uh, a female that you're tricking with that you pretty much doing with your wife. Except for, you know, your woman. You know, you go the extra mile for the woman and you know, you're actually trying to build something with a woman that you're married to, man. But you still got to, you're going to come out of pocket. You know what I mean? Of course. So, but here's the thing, though. Uh -huh. um, if you're talking about, I've always, I've always told people. I don't care how you add it up, it's still a subtraction. Right. I don't care how you add it up, I don't care what you want to say in it. Uh, what it is, it's still, a, it's still a subtraction. I've always told these dudes, ain't no such thing as free. Okay. There's no such thing as free. We said this 10 years ago, and they said we didn't have no game. And now everybody in their mama talking about tricking. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> right? For real. So, <clears throat> if you add it up, it's still a subtraction. But the only difference is, is that uh, here, you know, I'm interested in, you know, building some type of legacy. Right. I'm not interested, because uh, I was slated. I always said this, man. I was prepared to go, you know, the way of the hospice trip. You know? <laughs> okay. The old nigga on hospice with, with dead sores all up and down his legs. Wow. Uh, shitting on himself raw, you know. Yeah. Raw between his legs, bed sores and shit like that, being abused by an STNA who moonlights as a stripper. <laughs> you know, with a, with a goal, with a single gold teeth just to the you left know, the center of the mouth. Right. You know, twelve inch acrylics and all that shit, falling out tracks. Mm. That was what I was prepared to do. Okay. You know, that's what that's that's because that's the ultimate destination. What people don't tell you is that it's a trade off. Mm -hmm. There's nothing perfect. There's no perfect scenario. A lot of dudes took the tricking as a scenario because they felt some kind of way with the date market, and I get it. They were upset, you know, about what they were coming across. They were upset with the dishonesty of the females. They were upset with the treachery of the snapdragons, and you know, they they they, they just couldn't catch a break, mm -hmm. you know. And it's like, okay, well, yeah, that, I can understand you wanting to adopt that strategy as training wheels because you wanted to get some kind of experience. And that's why I said that initially I said that tricking was a win because it did get them some contact with a woman. Okay. It still get them some type of ideal sexual contact, which is what they wanted. Okay. You know, but as <clears> far <throat> as, you know, a way of life, or excuse me, as far as taking it and thinking that you can, you know, somehow idealize it or romanticize it. 
I wanted to tell people what it was. It was transactional. But what happens is, is you have a human experience because you're a human being and you ain't really dealing with uh, real true to the game track walking homes. These are just really bad relationships in the black community. And see, what's happening is, is that we got generations and generations and generations of uh, dudes, generations of dudes and generations of females that have been bred on whole trick ideology. Right. And whole trick philosophy because somebody in their family was grinding. Somebody in their family was doing some shit they weren't supposed to do. Somebody in their family, they always had a grimy uncle. They always had a grimy auntie who was like one uh, degree of separation away from, you know, the track. And so we that in, in black America, the street is not very far from mm. you. Okay. You don't have that far degree of a separation in black America. Most of black America is working class and working poor. And so all the lifestyles and trappings that go along with the working class and the working poor segment of black America is always there right at hand. And chicken and hoeing is one of those lifestyles. Okay. You know, and so because they were so used to it and had been introduced to it, I mean, because think about it. What's the one thing that, you know, you and I used to hear during our generation, a lot of these, you know, women would tell their daughters, you know, sometimes you got to use what you got to get what you want. Right. You know, I'm sure you heard that before. Oh, hell yeah. You know, or, or they would <clears> tell them, <throat> you, you got a pussy, you should never be broke. Right. You see, they, they were selling this they were selling this ideology back then, but I think some of them believed that they were trying to give them game. In other words, a man should be taken care of. Well, the parents took that and flipped it and said, well, look, you know, uh, the traditional lifestyle of man and woman, and they saw how men would provide for women, and so they attributed value to a woman's pussy because a man would want to take care of the woman he fucked. Mm -hmm. So it was a perversion of the normal values that is in suburban America that black America didn't get exposed to because their homes were messed up in the first place. You see? So we had generations and generations of renegades and outlaws uh, uh, of dudes that were really tricks. Mm -hmm. Dudes that were really tricks and girls that were hoeing uh, without malice of forethought. And so it wasn't premeditated. They were doing it almost by osmosis because the environment encouraged it okay. in the black community. The environment, because the environment encouraged it, A, because they didn't have healthy you know, family homes, and B, they didn't have healthy family homes because there was no real true daddies in the home like that. Right. You look at something like Everybody Hates Chris, right? Yeah. You ever seen that show? You see Terry Crews' character, Julius, mm -hmm. and then he says, you know, in that show, he says it was only four daddies working on the block. I mean, think about that. An entire block, and it's four daddies on the block, and all of them go to work. Okay. What does that tell you? I mean, what kind of families do you think those people are going to be in? The rest of those people that don't have those four daddies. Hmm. Not know, good. Take the Gerbils family, right? The Gerbil. <laughs> Not the Gerbil. <laughs> the Gerbil, right? Yeah. The Gerbil. She's married now, by the way. Is she? Uh, yeah, somebody married the Gerbil. Whoa. Man. Somebody for everybody out here, man. Somebody married the Gerbil. Somebody for so, everybody. Okay. Yeah, so her family is just, you know, a dead full of damn hyenas and yeah. jackals mm -hmm. you know no no man to be found amongst them except for maybe an old granddad mm -hmm. you know and the rest of the family is a de facto it's a matriarchy not de facto it's a matriarchy okay well you know what what do you have when you have a little boy growing up around some shit like that mm. what do you have what, what what kind of you know masculinity because not everybody want to be masculine everybody want to be you know, uh, a Spartan now. Everybody want to be Leonidas 300 now. Mm -hmm. You know, but how you going to be Le Leonidas 300 and you growing up around a den of estrogen? Man, boy. I mean, them how dudes, man, they, you know, they basically, they come out uh, LBGTQ, whatever that shit is, or they just come out to be 
males that just have like hyper feminine or hyper emotional reactions to shit. You know what I'm saying? And they end up getting their brains blowed out because they don't understand that there's consequences and repercussions for their actions because they've been looking at their mama all their life and their mama never really had to deal with no consequences and repercussions. So now, you know, she done reared herself a little pookie that he, he don't actually think that, you know, he, he actually has something that he don't actually have to uh, bite the bullet, man, when it comes to his actions out there, man. He don't have to face no consequences. Yeah. See, Don Corleone said something, you know, and that movie teaches a lot. So I see why people are infatuated with it, because there's a lot of lessons in that movie. Mm -hmm. He says in that movie, he says, men can't be careless. Right. He said, women and children can be careless, but men can't be careless. Right. See, a woman can go into uh, a social services center and ask for, you know, food stamps and ask for all that shit, and she'll get sympathy. Mm -hmm. Never mind that she had the same opportunity to get an education and a job, just like everybody else. She'll be accorded instant sympathy if she has children. And even without children, she'll always be given that extra consideration. But if you go sit your ass in a in, entitlement, center, in a entitlement center and try to apply for food stamps or assistance, it's a totally different vibe with the men than it is with the women. Okay. I mean, those people look at you with disgust Man. and contempt you know, if you try to do something like that. Because okay. for you, there are no excuses. And it's another thing I learned, you know, being uh, uh, a married man at this point. Uh, if it go wrong, it's on me. Yeah, there it go. If it goes wrong, it's on me. If it go right, if it go right, mm -hmm. uh, it's a family thing. Okay. It's a, if it goes right now, it's a family thing. But if it's go, if it goes wrong, it's on you. <clears throat> and that's kind of like when I look at it. When you look at, and I don't, I'm just gonna bring in theology for a second. Okay. No matter what uh, deity you praise or you bow before, right? You never praise your deity when your frig when your refrigerator is full and when your pockets are fat. Right. The last thing you do is thank whatever deity you pray to. Mm -hmm. You never thank, you never stop to give thanks to that deity. But you let a string of bad luck befall. You let a string of cruel reversals beset you. The first thing you want to do is cry out to your deity, why is he letting this happen to you? Yeah. You see, he's getting all of the criticism and none of the praise the curses well, of Job <laughs> exactly mm -hmm. and that's kind of like what it is to be the head of a household you get the criticism but you get very little praise but you still gotta do it anyway yeah. and you do it anyway because that's where your power comes from because see if you're, if you're displaced it all crumbles mm. and it was like what you used to say back in the game he was like, look, I'm going to step back and I'm going to watch their life implode. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm the nerve center of everything and I'm going to shut off contact. And I'm going to watch, you know, everything implode. Yeah. And it's so funny because it's so, the, the analogy is so apropos because, you know, first it was, you, you know they're in trouble because they come with the hate big head text. Uh-huh, yep. Hit you with that first. And then if you don't answer that hey big head text, it's what fuck you then, big night. They cussing you out, talking all slick mm. because you didn't answer that text. And the reason they cussing you out and acting slick, talking slick because you didn't answer that text, is because their life is imploded. Mm -hmm. They need that. They, that that hey big head text is actually a prayer. Mm -hmm. For yes, salvation and assistance. You see? So, that's kind of what it's like to be a father. That's kind of what it's like to be a, a, a husband and the head of a household. You see? Um, if you're displaced, it all crumbles. Yeah. It all crumbles. And the trick is, is to make sure you 
you deal with someone that can appreciate you know your role and your contribution because out there in the streets the chicks you deal with and here now is the final difference the chicks out there in the street will get resentful of the fact that they hooked on you and they exercised something that you and I used to call whore's remorse mm-hmm. they hate the fact that they depended fuck you and your money my yeah, then, then they'll come back and beg another you know they'll come back on their knees beg and then you know slurp with some meat and and, 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 and uh gurgle and nut another three weeks you know right. but the thing is is this you have to stand in you stand in that role you stand in that role and you stand in that responsibility so if things go wrong it's fuck big mike <clears throat> if things go right it's let's turn up mm-hmm. uh when tax season comes around there's a disturbance in the force they don't want to be bothered they get brand new you know yeah. and they change their phone number oh but after April 15th <laughs> you know it's easy to find them. you would think you would have a GPS system on them. right? but that's part of the game you play see whereas here when you marry there are good days and there are bad days <laughs> yeah. the good days and bad days you got to deal with it and get through it you got to deal with some things that you may not want to do and sometimes you know uh, my wife didn't want to get up and she want to you know go somewhere and I'm like look I've worked for the last four or five days I don't feel like going nowhere right. but it ain't about what I chose to do anymore mm-hmm. it ain't about what I chose to do I chose to share my life with somebody Okay. And that means I gotta make sacrifices. Yeah. That means I gotta do what I what I don't wanna do. And it was like a lot of times when you know, when you were out there. I'm sure you didn't wanna be in uh North what was it, Northland? Yeah, Northland. You know, you didn't wanna be in them hot ass projects in Northland trying to shoot that video. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. But you had to go do it. That was the hustle. You know, I'm sure some of those times you didn't wanna drag on some of them aggravating chicks and you know grimy bitches and Ugh. gully snap dragons you didn't want to do all that all the time or the chick you may have been doing the video with may have been cool but she had this gully ass slick mouth slap snap dragon tagging along with her yeah and she was the worst mm-hmm. you see those type of situations well you got to deal with that that you know the, the fleas come with the dog man mm. you know but this is what I want to say, man. You know, there's a lot of conversation out there with cats. Is, you know, everyone, everybody want to ask, how do you fix the black community, man? And oh my God, man, it's just so simple, man. Number one, stop asking black women to fix the problem. Black women are not going to fix the problem. They can't fix the problem. They're actually not made to fix the problem. Men are supposed to fix the problem. You know what I mean? As long as the government and the Caucasian is giving this woman carte blanche to do this, that, and a third and giving her freebies and whatnot, why would she give all that up to so-called fix the problem? You know what I mean? That's not going to happen, man. It's, it take men to step forward and create something to build something to, like I said, solve the problems, man. Women, just like we're going back to the Godfather, man. You know, women and children... Uh, they can't fix the problem. Men are supposed to be built to fix the problem, man. Yeah. Well, you know, you know what they say. You know, if you take a kid to Disneyland, is he going to is he going to want to go home? <laughs> Hell no. You know, you remember when they got that little boy Ilian Gonzalez? Yeah. You know, and they brought him over here, and they were trying to keep him over here, and they didn't want to deport him back to his father, mm-hmm. Cuba, Castro, and so uh, you know they. They were brainwashing the little boy, so they took him to Disneyland and all that stuff. And then he was like, you know, jumping up and down on the bed. It was like, do you want to go back home? Do you want to go back home? The little boy was like, no, I do not want to go in right. Spanish. Well, no, he doesn't want to go if you took him to Disneyland. If you making him think that every other weekend he's going to Disneyland, no, nah, he don't want to go back to Cuba. He don't want to go back to Santa. He want to stay in Disneyland. Mm-hmm. 
you know, and it's the same thing in the black community. They've had free reign. They've had free reign for over half a century. They've had free reign for over half a century now. Mm-hmm. Think about that. Think about that. They haven't had to answer to any power right. for half a century. They'll talk about, oh, we had to answer to the black church. No, you didn't. Okay. You didn't have to answer to the black. You were doing whatever you wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Don't put that on the black. You were doing whatever you wanted. I'm not saying that some of them didn't get whatever they got, whatever happened to them in the church. I'm not saying that. But don't put that on the black church. That's not the black church. You were free. You okay. were doing whatever you felt you wanted to do. And so now you don't got caught. You don't, you don't got caught up with whatever you're doing in the street. So now you want to fall back on the black church. You want to fall back on the black family. That ain't got nothing to do with anything. It don't have mm-hmm. anything to do with anything. It wasn't about anything. It's what it was. You've been free for 70 years. Nobody told you because there was no man in the house. Right. There was no man in the house. You know, and I hate to say it, it goes back before welfare. It's a documentary, man, that I invite the, you know, because, you know, Tony always comes with information. I don't, right. you know, I ain't on the bigotry level all the time. Okay. You know, uh, there's a documentary called Jazz. And you niggas don't have to read the books. You don't have to read the books. Just go get the damn documentary. You can get it on Roku. You can buy it on PBS. You can get it on Amazon Prime. And so what it is, is it's a chronology of the evolution of the art form of jazz, right? The child mm-hmm. of jazz. And you see all these, you know, giants. You see all these giants and all these hit makers, you know, all these people. And it's like, okay, you got all these giants. You got all these hit makers, all these legends in jazz. 98% of them without a daddy. Okay. Not, and the ones that had daddies, the daddies are questionable. I got nothing against a good ass with it, but you know, punching your son in the gut, mm-hmm. knocking his teeth out at six. Damn. You know, yeah, you know, it's it's it's, it's really some horrible and despicable shit. You know what I'm saying? Okay. It really is. And you go back and see that, and you like most of these these fathers, most of these you know giants, guys like Louis Armstrong. Uh, uh, Billy Holiday, uh, who was another one? Dizzy Gillespie, Charlie Parker. Daddy ain't nowhere in the house. Sarah Vaughn, daddy ain't nowhere in the house. Mary Lou Williams, daddy ain't nowhere in the house. You know, Ma Rainey, daddy ain't nowhere in the house. Bessie Smith, daddy ain't nowhere in the house. Ella Baker, daddy ain't nowhere in the house. The list goes on and on and on. Okay. And you can't blame it on, you can't blame that on welfare. <laughs> That didn't show up to 65. Okay. So they've had free reign forever. And when they've had free reign forever, how can you expect them to yield any power to you? Mm. How can you expect that to happen? <clears throat> Only way that's going to happen is if uh, black men actually create or build something comparable or better than what they already have or what exactly. what the current establishment has but exactly. black black men don't seem to get that you know what i mean they don't seem no, to they, under- get it. they get it they just don't want to do it okay see what it is is they understand that they have to build something better but they want to come up with a bunch of excuses mm-hmm. when i build but she won't give me any she won't give me the choice cuts of poo <laughs> well i'll build you know but uh, i have to have my own private poo Mm-hmm. I'll do this, but you know she must give me a first shot at the pool. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? Yeah. And that is the biggest trick mindset of all. You know, when a woman see, okay, so you will sit here in this shitty cage. You won't even think to clean up the cage if I won't give you no pool. Mm-hmm. If I won't give you no snatch, you perfectly, you perfectly, uh, uh, uh content to live in filth if I don't give you any I mean what does that say man mm, mm, mm. I mean what does that say well that man? says a lack of wisdom and, and it uh, smacks of that immaturity says a lack of maturity yeah immaturity man and, immaturity and, and the thing That's, is go ahead what do you think that sounds like do you, do you think that makes so wet to hear you say that <clears throat> no <laughs> and then on top of it you're not the most attractive dude in the world okay 
you know. Your teeth are kind of far apart. Right. Okay. Uh, your belly kind of round. Mm-hmm. You see? And, and, and you know, it, it, Hell, you just well, described me to the T, and I ain't really never had that big of a problem. <laughs> <laughs> but the situation was it was different than you. Right. See, the thing is, when you go into the school, right? Yeah. You went to the army, right? Mm-hmm. And you cut your teeth in one of the most violent organizations ever to exist on the planet, and that's the American penal system. Right. So if you got a belly, you learn it. Mm-hmm. That's the point. Yeah. They got a belly, and they ain't done shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, you know, you've seen those old masters, like they cut up in their youth. Uh-huh. But then the older they get, you know, they get a little body fat. You know, mm-hmm. Stephen Hayes don't look the same today at 70 some odd years old as he looked when he was 39 or 36. Mm-hmm. He don't look the same. Yeah. You know, Hasumi Sensei don't look the same at 90 years old as he used to look when he was 35 or 36. They done been through things. They live like they're getting old. They're making they transition to the grave. Mm. These dudes haven't made any contribution to anything. They just figure they entitled to sex because, you know, she's here. She's a woman. I'm a man. And we come from the same place. And, you know, our skin is the same color. And, you know, I, I, I haven't, you know, I, I haven't committed no crimes. And, you know, you know, I, I got a job. And, you know, this, that, and the third. But check it out. This 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 is the thing that just be killing me, man. Cause I've actually sat and listened to dudes whine and bellyache about what you was just talking about, not getting the choice cuts of poon, but they was also whining and bitching about how the black family or the black community is, you know, in all all sorts of disarray. And then they're talking about, you know, I ain't trying to be no cleanup man, and I ain't trying to take care of no bastard kids and. And I'm like, in the same breath, you talked about how messed up the black community is, but uh-huh. you're not willing to step forward and sacrifice, because that's what it is. You're going to have to sacrifice your ego and your time to actually reach down and help, and especially young black boys. You know what I mean? I can see you having uh, an issue about actually trying to mentor a young black girl, but young black boys, you know, you basically talking about how Black men are getting the short end of the stick, no matter uh-huh. no matter where they turn. But then uh-huh. there's a female out there who ain't gonna give you no play, but she got a son that for some reason gravitates towards you and wants uh-huh. to actually be around you and learn from you. And you basically uh-huh. giving him the finger because the mama won't fuck you. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. well, how how are we gonna build anything with niggas around like that? You're not going to build anything with niggas like that. Right. And I used to ask myself, you know, when I was coming up and I used to see niggas getting picked on in high school. Yeah. And I used to say, you know, what's the use? I used to ask, pose this existential question. Like, why is this bully here? Why does he exist? Mm-hmm. And I understand now why bullies exist. One, they're a test and they're usherance into manhood because you have to confront your fear. And two, they're in place, they're put in place, so they're put in the ecosphere to keep suckers in their place. Okay. That's the purpose that a bully makes. And I say that to say that an individual that moves like that, I understand what they're trying to say that, that, that they don't want to be taken advantage of. That right. they don't want to be taken advantage of. Mm-hmm. They don't want to be used. I get that, right? Mm-hmm. But then by the same token, when you sit here and you say, well, you know, you don't want to be bothered with those children, but then by the same token, you want to lay with their mama. I mean, that, that indicates a chronic lack of common sense. Mm-hmm. Right, and they'll say, "Well, you know, well, what will happen? You know, she let this dude lay with her. He don't give a damn about her kid. Well, she's attracted to him, and she's not attracted to him. Why well, should be able to do it too? Well, yeah, a lot of shit should be happening. You know, uh, mm-hmm. uh, 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 um, what's what's her face? Uh, uh, Joe, uh, Joe Biden should not be president. Right. What can I tell you? Joe Biden should not be president, but he is. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot of shit that shouldn't be happening that does happen." And so a lot of dudes got, you know, beef with their genetic lottery in life and they're upset. And so what they want to do is they want to hold, they think that, they, they believe that they hold the community hostage because they're holding back their little contribution. They think that they're holding back their little contribution. But you were never there in the first place and you were invisible. You know, even when you were there, you weren't there because they weren't checking for you anyway. 
But this this so, the thing. Uh, the I, only place where you could have made yourself felt and made yourself stand out was to make that contribution. Uh-huh. But if you if you would have done that, they would have been able to see those characteristics that would have made you more attractive, and you could have gotten what you wanted on the back end. But because you're so butthurt that you didn't get the right of first refusal, you're just another bitch. This is my thing, you know. I'm all for if you don't want to be taken care or taken. Excuse me. If you don't want to be taken taken advantage of, you know what I mean. You're gonna swerve her. You're gonna swerve the, the the child and whatnot. I'm all for that if you stop being a, a hypocrite, man, or you stop being. Should I say? Thank you, and I can out-philosophize, and I'm on out-last you.